So I'll introduce um, what we did and, and why, essentially. Um, so you're probably aware of, of Lottie Files being this kind of um, tool for making online animations that can either be output using SVG or uh, Canvas, um, depending on the player that you use. And it's this sort of cross-platform tool for making animations um, used by lots of big companies, but uh, very flexible, very cool. Um, Sion wanted to have a bunch of these uh, in a few different um, formats. In their case, they were kind of overlaying them on top of existing media, existing images. Um, and Lottie Files provides a plugin for WordPress already, but it's very kind of, um, uh, it doesn't show it on that list particularly, but um, yeah, it, it's a bit buggy. It's not brilliantly well-written. It's not brilliantly kind of optimized. Um, it's a bit over done in the admin. It has its like full own, um, media library pop-up that basically recreates all this UI that they've got on the website for finding animations and things, which is maybe good if if that's what you want. Um, but this was kind of aimed at being much more lightweight, really just for the purpose of like, you have the animations already or you're happy to go and find them uh, via other means. You just need to upload them and display them somehow. So the approach that I took... Um, is not to haven't yet added a custom block. Rather, we're extending the uh, core block, so the core image block, core cover block, and the core media and text block. Um, this is kind of really tied into the client wanting to do these overlays. Um, so that was, that was the approach that we took. Uh, it It would be... And maybe an hour or so work to add a custom block just to do animations on their own as well and add that to this, um, which could be a nice a nice addition. But yeah, I've so, got one for you. <laughs> I can add it in. Yeah, cool. <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's a very basic plugin. It's just built using um, the uh, WordPress create block um, tool. So it's WP scripts. Uh, nothing particularly complicated about it. So it's just, yeah, WP scripts uh, or NPM run start, NPM run build. Um, there's no build process at the moment. So you do commit the build files, but until it's kind of more widely used, um, I don't need to invest the time there just yet. Um, but yeah, so that's the kind of reason for its existence. I'll get into how it works then. So we have um, an image block already inserted here. Uh, the plugin doesn't really do, it, it's difficult to kind of do a um, visual in, in the editor at the moment. So that's one thing to note that it, it could be a potential improvement but it's tricky to do because of React, basically. But um, So at the moment, it's all, all of the UI is just in the sidebar. I've got this Lottie animation section um, for each of the blocks that it extends. Um, and then you've got a few options within that as well. So interaction, um, whether you want the animation to automatically play when you view the page, um, whether you want it to run when you hover over the block or the image, um, or whether you want it to run when you click on the uh, on the block. Um, so those are the options. And then you've got a few more here. So overlay is a toggle. Um, without that checked, it will replace the image wholesale. So I'll show you what that looks like. You can see pretty much straight away on the page. Uh, the image is hidden. Uh, what it does with the default styling and layout, it will kind of 
overlay the canvas on the image at the size the image is shown um because the image because the animations are scalable that means that we could say uh let's make this the wide width save that refresh the page the animation will just kind of follow the scale of the image on the page as it's shown um and that will also kind of be responsive to um i like shrink it down you can see it follows what the image would do uh which is all quite nice uh other options that you have in there are um yeah if we turn overlay on the image will still be visible but the animation will be overlaid on top of it uh, and then bounce this is kind of dependent on the animation like some of them are made with a kind of start and an end point some of them might be made that like all of the frames of the animation will end up back at the starting point um i don't know if i can demonstrate that with let's say this one you can see here in like the lottie editor on the lottie files website uh, i could pause this so the animation starts here but it also ends the same way it begins pretty much so that's like an animation that would just uh keep going um if it was set to bounce it would kind of play in this way so like it would go to the end and then it would return to the start by going back through the frames um so depending on the animation that might be worthwhile or, or not um i can show you an example on, on the client's website where they use that i can imagine um, that it's a it's a tool that some other animation programs call like palindrome looping where it'll go back and forth rather than looping yeah linearly. Yeah, so that, that's the option there. It makes most sense when you're using it with the hover interaction. Um, so that would be that would be why you want to do that. Um, the last thing then to note, um, partly again because of client requirement, um, this is the mechanism for adding uh, the animation. So you'll have this button to upload, um, and then we have a slider for uh, the breakpoint here. So this is if you want to show a different animation when the screen width is higher than this pixel width. Um, and that's based on kind of nothing to do with device pixel ratio or anything like that. It's just like if you write a media query with a pixel width, this is the equivalent of that. So uh, I could choose a different animation to show um a higher width if, if i wanted to so i downloaded a few here just a quick note um the lottie files website provides two formats um a plain json file or this dot lottie uh, extension uh the dot lottie extension is actually just a zip file um but it's a much smaller download on the front end and, and the player understands what to do with it. Um, so I can upload this one. These are supported too. You can see that there. And you get the little preview in the media library too. Um, so yeah, these two That's file types flex. are supported. Yeah, so we've got JSON or um, .lati. And it'll do a little bit of processing when you upload. It'll try to work out okay what the what are the intrinsic native dimensions of the animation and things like that. Um, not fully implemented for the .lotty files because that means like expanding the zip file and these can actually contain multiple animations. It, there's a lot more complexity available. Uh, and did you write <laughs> that logic, or did we steal that out of their plugin? Maybe still. Stuff. I I wrote that. It, it wasn't nice. too hard. It basically kind of um, it it's for the plain JSON files. There's like a, a width and a height attribute in there. So just like JSON decode, read the W and the H parameters, and then off you go. Um, so it's kind of easy to detect if a JSON file is specifically a Lottie file 
So under the hood as well, one of the things that we're doing with these attachments is um, setting some uh, metadata with the attachment post to say, uh, this is a Lottie file. Uh, and that's how the, that's how I'm kind of modifying how it's displayed or able to kind of target them specifically in the media library to add the animations there. That's um, very cool. You also just saved yeah. me some decent chunk of work later today with the width and height suggestion. Nice. Okay, cool. <laughs> nice. Um, so yeah, that, that information is there. Um, this is the, the way it works by default. There, there are other things that we did um, with regards to, if I turn overlay on and save that. Um, so there we are. And I've made it into the hover interaction as well. There we go. <laughs> um, like this animation is actually one of those that is, it kind of loops all the way back to the start anyway. He puts the gift away. So when I, it'll play the whole thing again. Doesn't make sense for the bounce, but you can see uh, with the hover interaction, it'll return to the start of the animation on mouse out, um, which is quite nice. Um, what else was I going to say? That was pretty much the gist of it, really. Um, but yeah, so at the front end output, actually, that's important. Um, the client wanted a few different things, like the animations would actually break out the edge of the window and things like that. So the default CSS is quite minimal for this. Um, uh, there's some JavaScript that is adding uh, a, if you can see that, I will try and bump the size of this up. So it's a bit more visible. Um, that's a canvas tag. Um, it kind of copies things like the class name over, um, sets the, the width and height attributes based on the intrinsic size um and uh well the uh, the size of the image that it's being shown at and then um, you also get a aspect ratio um and you can see as well the way it's kind of output um the plugin uses the uh html tag processor to add this data attribute um to the images within the blocks that we're targeting. So within the cover block or this like core media block um, or the um, media and text block, uh, we're adding this kind of data Lottie attribute, which is just uh, JSON encoded kind of config to pass to the uh, Lottie player, essentially. Um, so you've got a few of the class names that you can play with if you need to. So Lottie initialized means it's kind of loaded and ready to go. Um, and this is kind of how we're reading, reading that info back um, on the front end uh, and doing the overlay or replacing the image. Um, when the image is replaced, it's literally just visibility hidden. So it's all still there. Uh, but it does mean that you can then specifically target the canvas tag within the block, uh, within like the WP block image um, and override the CSS, do anything else that you would want to do with that. Um, so uh, the other thing to note is that um, both the canvas and the uh, the block itself. Uh, if I, uh, I think you can copy. Where is the thing to make it into uh, a variable? No, oh, okay, at the bottom, storage global variable. Um, usually, it tells you what the variable name is that it just gives you, right? 
Is that just you're just trying to reference that node and the inspector? Oh, temp one. Temp one. There we go. Yeah. Um, so uh, we add a um, Lottie property to that, um, uh, to those nodes. And that is the, that is the player, um, uh, the player object, if you like. So I could, I could do um, uh, Lottie.play, for example, if I wanted to do any further kind of programmatic control of the animation uh, beyond what is just set through the editor. Um, not that you would need to necessarily, but it's there as an option. Well, I have a use case where you would. <laughs> okay, <laughs> cool. Maybe, share, maybe we can transition and I can share sort of what we've done, which is, it's interesting. We've built something, I think, entirely complementary to what you have built so far. Ooh, that is serendipitous. Um, as an aside, <laughs> Uh, if you yeah. have a node selected in the element inspector, you can reference it from the console with dollar zero without having to do any right clicking. Ooh. So if I go on the canvas and then dollar uh, zero. Oh, that's tidy. Okay. Pro tip. <laughs> Pro tip right there. Nice. Uh, cool. So, yeah, that's uh, essentially. The, the Lottie Light plugin. Um, cool. And I can, yeah, and back over to you then. Uh, do you want to take over and share screen? Yeah, I can I can go ahead and share my screen and show sort of what we've built on the other side. Awesome. Um, let's see. Uh, this Are one. you allowed? Do I need to allow you? Cool. Seems to be okay. So nice. for background, um, back in the spring, we did the project for the Wikimedia Foundation to help them build a sort of like big splash visual report. Mm. And it included a number of little Lottie animations, uh, which the designer we were working with, and I believe Matt Watson worked out were going to be the best way to get these little visual interest bits. So it's, yeah. you know, sort of much more sort of supporting graphics rather than replacing an yes. image. Um, nice. And yeah. They have asked us in this current sprint to take this functionality and move it out of the report and into something they can use site-wide because they're trying to use it for some new campaigns coming up. Now, mm -hmm. that project got a little hairy at the end, and uh, we were up against a pretty aggressive deadline, and the features mm -hmm. kept growing, so we hard-coded all of this. And when I started okay. looking to see how we would go about putting together a... Uh, which one of these is the editor? There we go. How we could extract that, all of the Lottie stuff that we did for the report was totally hard-coded. So instead, mm. I took a similar approach and made a, a very lightweight animation block. That's not the right thing. Um, hang on a sec. I'm just going to grab the uh, right JSON file. Do, do, do. Uh, I see sort of pasting the code in place. Yeah. Uh -huh. So the mm -hmm. block shows the text box until you paste anything into it, and then it'll jump back to that view for you to edit it. Um, nice. <laughs> interestingly, uh, I did okay. just about all of this inline rather than using the sidebar there is one control in the sidebar <laughs> for maximum Nothing. width um and yeah. i'm going to add based on what you just said i was about to do some nonsense with like dynamically actually querying the rendered size after it finishes playing in js with a complete event I'm just going to use the width yeah. and add aspect ratio to that that's brilliant yeah um, um yeah definitely one to like Appreciate your, your kind of feedback on that because it, it is basically what I'm doing on the client side. Um, so yeah, like making it better in the editor experience would be good. Um, having the specific block for it would be good. Um, and kind of round out that plugin, I think. But yeah, no, definitely. And then uh, I'm not sharing my whole screen now. My one sec. No worries. The other thing that I've been working on is 
to have this actually accommodate prefers reduced motion. So the way that I've got it set up right now, it will play and then replay on scroll. Um, it, that's currently the way it's set up. That's the default they want. Mm -hmm. We might customize it later on, particularly if we mm -hmm. merge this back into Lottie Light. But mm -hmm. then if we set reduced motion and reload the page, it renders and then we automatically jump to the point where it's um, completely played. So it mm -hmm. goes to and stops at the total frame count. So that's one yeah, area yeah. where we did find that having that programmatic control was necessary. Um, it would be good to make that to... into into Lottie Def Light as well, for sure. Yeah, definitely interested in in uh, upstreaming that up to Lottie Light because I think it's a similar, uh, a pretty common yes. thing. Yeah, um, yeah, for sure. And then, yeah, on the in editor side, I did what I imagine you were deciding was annoying to do, and I think quite rightly, where <laughs> I set up a reference for the animation and for the mm. container that it lives in, and then when they change, we reinitialize and autoplay, but don't loop so that it gets to the end and then stops. Yeah, I would say I think my issue was just that. Um... Like this, I was okay with that in terms of like, it would be totally fine if it's like just a custom block and like all you have to worry about is showing that. The issue I found hard was just because I was trying to like, um, because I was integrating with other blocks to do yeah. this overlay kind of feature. Um, and we, that I imagine the, that we'd be the... like stepping in with the block, a block edit component filter and that never works the way I expect it to. No, um, it doesn't kind of match where where you'd kind of want to render or insert the canvases and stuff on the front end. So I just kind of, I didn't bother basically. <laughs> um, but I think that's okay. And if you've got a, a special like specific block for it too, then all good. And I can definitely see you having like um, patterns ready to go to have those big stats overlaid on top of animations pulled down into them and negative margins set up and that kind of thing. So yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's, that's going to be a very cool use case. And for anyone following along at home, the code for my version is still currently embedded in this annual report plugin because I didn't know about Lottie Light, but mm -hmm. I think after this or in a future phase of the project, we'll definitely get all of this upstreamed and maybe be yeah. able to use that plugin here because I imagine they'd appreciate that flexibility too. Being able to upload those files in the media library is awesome. The one downside to the approach that we took is that there's no you know, caching or, or zipping optimization of the assets we deliver. So they're not big, but they could be smaller. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think they will come from like, CDN and and there's that dot uh, Lottie support that's in Lottie Light, so that that could help. Um, but yeah, I think it's actually like not a huge amount of work to to get those kind of mm -hmm. managed. But yeah, fantastic, nice cool. one. Thank you so much for the demo. It's really good to know about that, and I'll definitely be flagging that for their uh, website owner to know that that's another set of tools available. Yeah, great. All right. Um, yeah, uh, good to talk and good to see that. Um, yeah, I'll speak soon and yeah, nice one. Thanks again. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Thanks, Rob.